How foolish to believe we are more powerful than the sea or the sky. Ruta Sepetis, Salt to Sea. Finally, after a week in Bimini, we get a window to get out. We are super excited. Lots of others were joining us this morning as we all headed out about sunrise and high tide. The winds kept us on shore, and we had been unable to visit the Sapona to snorkel, but we did get a great view of her as we headed out of Bimini. The SS Sapona was one of a fleet of concrete ships commissioned by former U.S. President Woodrow Wilson to serve as troop transport during World War I because steel was in short supply. Believed to have been designed by Henry Ford, it was built by the Liberty Ship Building Company in Wilmington, North Carolina, and a sister to the ship Cape Fear. Because the ship was completed after the end of the war, it was sold for scrap to Carl Fisher, one of the developers of Miami Beach. He used it briefly as a casino and then for oil storage, before it was purchased in 1924 by Bruce Bethel, a former British war captain and liquor merchant out of Nassau. Bethel moved the ship to Bimini and used it as a floating warehouse to store and distribute his liquor supply during the Prohibition era, earning him notoriety as Bimini's Rum King. We headed across the bank to Chubb. It was a beautiful smooth morning and the water was crystal clear. We could see starfish on the bottom. As the day progressed and we seemed to be in the middle of nowhere, we were visited by a single seagull who just kept circling and checking us out. He even sassed me a little on one flyover. Through the Northwest Channel and over to Chubb, right as the sun set for the night. The next morning we woke to lots of fishing boat traffic and were able to get a good look at Chubb before heading out. This is a big fishing resort area. Right, here we have a boat coming out, two boats coming out, going fishing. Gonna rock our world this morning. Um, yeah, oh, it's a, it's not a paddle board, it's a hydro, those hydro boards. So, there they go. As we headed over toward Nassau, we had smooth waters, but big rolling seas. The video just does not show how big the rollers were. We were in some deep waters, so if they had been breaking at all, Dee said he would have been uncomfortable, but I think I would have just been scared. Just as Nassau was coming into view, Dee snagged a mahi on the line. Supper was going to be perfect with fresh fish on the table. As we made our approach into Nassau to locate our anchorage at Athol Island, we got to see Atlantis. Coming into our anchorage near Nassau, was just beautiful as the waves crashed along the rocky shores. Once again,
again. We got anchored, watched the sun go down, and got to see fireworks from Atlantis. One more day and we'll finally make Eleuthera. How's it going, Captain? Pretty good. Looks nice and deep, which is what we like. Yes. <laughs> We're going to stay on the inside and go out Fleming Cut and then stay kind of close to shore up to Spanish Wales. We stayed inside up to Fleming Cut and we had a smooth ride, but well, there is no video of Fleming Cut because it was terrible. Our recommendation is don't be scared of current cut and go on up, cut through to Spanish Wales. More to come on our travels through current cut. Either way, we made it up to Spanish Wales for an absolutely stunning sunset. Next up, exploring Spanish Wales. Spanish Wells and we're walking out to the Atlantic side. It's supposed to be a really nice beach area. It looks like it's high tide, but can you just see them breaking out there? It's supposed to be a sandbar all the way out to those breakers here. They say what about a mile? Could be a mile actually a mile that you could actually walk on the sandbar. Yeah. Yeah. 